we are opposed to sanctions. We we are on record say calling for the lifting of the sanctions because say, sanctions uh, do not serve any purpose. We remain opposed to them. But we have always made it clear that uh, they are not the cause of economic collapse. They are not the main cause. Uh, yes, they might contribute, but they are not the main cause. And we have defined the main cause in our various documents that uh, it is corruption, it is the neoliberal policies, it is nepotism uh, uh, that uh, <coughs> has caused the <coughs> collapse of our economy. But sanctions must go. Uh, we, we don't uh, compromise on that. Sanctions must go. And why do you say they must go? Because you've said that they are not the main cause. Uh, people are saying that the main cause is actually Zalupia, which is also what you have spoken about, corruption, there is looting, but we seem to see uh, a lot of amplification of the ZANU-PF voice that sanctions must go. So do you think that joining the sanctions must go crusade would in a way pass a to ZANU-PF? We defined our strike in Zimbabwe because we are not just like any other political formation that is established to <coughs> remove ZANU-PF from power, established for any other reasons because we are too uh, through the master learning institutes of analysis where to say what is the problem in Zimbabwe, what is the nature of our strike in, strike in Zimbabwe and came to the conclusion that uh, ours is a strike against imperialism. Ours is a strike against what we today call the looting class. Uh, therefore, these sanctions are imposed by imperialist forces. We cannot as communists stand on one corner with imperialists. Even if Locally, we do not agree with the ZANU PF, but on the question of sanctions, uh, because ours is a strike against imperialism, we cannot uh, say maintain the sanctions, then you remove them when there is a new government. No, no, that, that's, that's not how we operate. So, I say on a question of principle, because the sanctions are used as a tool by imperialist forces, and uh, therefore we are opposed on the imposition of the sanctions. Uh, by the United States and uh, her friends on the political leadership in Zimbabwe. Yes, we understand. Yes, as, as, as uh, we're having this discussion with some comrades on the 25th of October, a day which SADC has uh, put as a day to carry out various activities to ensure that sanctions are removed. Uh, comrades were then raising the issue of local sanctions imposed by ZANU-PF to the people of Zimbabwe. But our view is this that as communists, we reject sanctions imposed by the United States of America and the friends or by any other. Uh, equally, we are opposed to the looting of our resources by the political elite in Zimbabwe. That's the nature of our strategy. Okay, and then there is this global realignment taking place. There is China on the other side with Russia. Let me say the BRICS. Then there is uh, the West on one side. And I think the war in Ukraine has already kicked up some dust into the air. Where does the ZCP stand here? We know that you are friends with the Chinese, but in this global realignment, are you therefore also standing with them and the Russians? What, what we are having in Ukraine is that Ukraine is a battleground. It's an imperialist war happening in Eastern Europe. There, there's this misconception that Russia from Norway invaded Ukraine. That's not factual. What happened is the people of Donetsk region uh, decided through a democratic referendum that uh, they don't want to be part of Ukraine. There was a genocide that was ongoing in that region. President Putin and Russia, by the way, President Putin is not a communist. He's not a member of the communist part of Russia. Uh, 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 he's, uh, he's a nationalist. Uh, the communist party of Russia is in the is the opposite opposition party in Russia. It is represented in the Duma. So the, we are not supporting President uh, Putin on the basis that is a communist. No, we are supporting him on a, a, a on principle that uh, NATO must be dismantled. It is NATO that he is causing suffering across the globe. And by the way. The target is not Russia. It is unfortunate that uh, the war is uh, 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 being fought by Russia, Russia fighting NATO. 
in that in that part of the world in Eastern Europe. And for anyone to even think that uh, uh, Russians are fighting against Ukraine, it is not true. It is a, a, an imperialist war fought by Russia, where Ukraine. Uh, is at uh, the background, but the target is China because China has surpassed the, the United States of America uh, economically, technologically, and uh, the United States want to be number one. So, how do you then weaken China? First, you must identify her friends, we can have friends and then get to China. So we understand clearly. So we are opposed to NATO. NATO must be dismantled. We know what NATO has done globally in Libya and, and elsewhere across the globe. This is why we are calling for the dismantlement of NATO as a military force. And now there is another uh, argument that if NATO doesn't extend or if the US doesn't extend its interest outside the US, the Chinese will take over. And there are allegations that the Chinese, some of them are real, of course, that the Chinese, especially Chinese businessmen operating in Africa, are exploiting workers, they are exploiting resources of Africa, they're not even banking in Africa, they're not investing much in Africa except to prop up uh, these dictatorships. We have them in Zimbabwe, they're trying to come into South Africa, we have them in Zambia, the current president wants to kick them out. We had them in Ethiopia. And there are always allegations following Chinese wherever they go. And do you think, therefore, they need to be checkmated by the U.S. as it is doing? But, but the United States, uh, <coughs> who gave the United States to be the policeman of the world? <laughs> that, that, that's, that's what we are opposed to. Because you can't have a country imposing itself to all of us as the policeman of the world. But on the question of the Chinese business people, we are very much concerned as the Zimbabwe Communist Party by the attitude of the Chinese business people in Zimbabwe uh, and elsewhere in the continent. We have held meetings with the Communist Party of China raising these issues to say we cannot abandon our own workers. If we are to build true friendship as the Zimbabwe Communist Party, with the Communist Party of China, it must be built on truth, on, on truth, because we must be truthful. We are the organ of the working class. So there's no way that we can abandon the workers in Zimbabwe in favor of having a relationship with the Communist Party of China. So we've raised these issues. In our latest theoretical vanguard, we publish <coughs> the message that we send to the Communist Party of China. We publish uh, the messages that he, firstly the ambassador of China to Zimbabwe raised when he was confronted he said the trade unions are in Zimbabwe are making things up but after our intervention having a discussion with the communist party of China the, the ambassador in Zimbabwe was instructed to say please investigate these allegations because we cannot afford a situation where Chinese business people abuse our workers. But the second point that, that we must mention, uh, our government, they go on a business transaction with China to borrow money. Yes. If, you go, if you come to me, you borrow money, you must pay it back. That, that is a business principle. Why, why is it wrong? Uh, uh, for China to ask the people to pay back the money that they will have borrowed to them. Because our governments go and uh, borrow money to China, and uh, because China is led by the Communist Party, therefore the expectation is that China should just uh, forget about the money that was borrowed by our governments. And uh, China does not interfere on how you then spend the money. The agreement is, we borrow you 100 million US dollars, you must pay it with interest. It's a business transaction. And if you fail to pay, pay the money, then it's certainly something must happen. If, if I go to a bank, uh, I apply for, for a loan, uh, if I can't pay, there must be something that must be done to recover, uh, uh, to save the debt. So that is the problem. And, and, and the mistake is that people think that China came to Africa carrying a gun, like the imperialists. They never did. China came purely to trade. But because we are led by corrupt leaders who then parcel out a connive with the Chinese business people to loot our resources. This is why in Zimbabwe we are saying as the Zimbabwe Communist Party, we have no faith in the in the triple C. 
uh, because it is neo it is a, is neoliberal. It defines the interests of the West. We have no faith in ZANU PF because ZANU PF does not it, it is corrupt. Does not in, protect the interests of the people of Zimbabwe. And by conniving with Chinese business people to loot our resources, we need a responsible government that represents the interests of the people of Zimbabwe. We must trade with China, we must do business with anyone in the world, but we must put the interests of the people of Zimbabwe, the interests of our nation first. Yeah, you, you raise an issue that the ambassador of China to Zimbabwe has asked to investigate. When do you expect these results of the investigations to come up? And who are they consulting? Who are they reporting these investigations to? Are they going to publish a document or something? Well, we don't know how they are carrying out, the ambassador is carrying out the investigation, but uh, what we have said is the Zimbabwe Communist Party. We always talk to our comrades in the trade unions to say there are allegations against the Chinese employers. Let's have these allegations documented because when we engage the Communist Party of China, we are not engaging on hearsay. We need to provide evidence to say you have a mine or there's a mine owned by Chinese business people in, in Midlands, for, for example, this is how they are treating workers. And by the way, it is the duty of the Zimbabwean government to ensure that the labor laws of Zimbabwe are followed to the land. It is not the duty of any foreign government. It is the duty of the Zimbabwean government. This is where the Zimbabwean government has failed. Because we need to enforce our labor laws. It doesn't matter whether you are an American investor, a Chinese investor, a British investor, a local investor. You must respect the rights of workers as entrenched in our labor laws. Yeah, but besides the workers and the exploitation of the workers, there are also people who are being displaced. This is a human rights issue. Do you think, don't you think that China also has a responsibility to make sure that its citizens outside of China respect the people where they operate in? Because at the end of the day, it's the image of China that gets uh, hurt at the end of the day. The, 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 this is what we are raising with the communist part of China, to say, if, if we are to build socialism uh, 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 guided by the thoughts of President Xi Jinping uh, of China or socialism, Chinese characteristics as they are building in China, equally we have a duty as the Zimbabwe Communist Party and the Zimbabweans to build socialism with the Zimbabwean characteristics. We must therefore, as I said earlier on, build our friendship based on truth and the best on protecting our own nationals, protecting our own sovereignty as the people of Zimbabwe. It is wrong for the Chinese to displace any communities. But again, they are not doing that on their own. It is clear that the relationship between the Communist Party of China and that of ZANU-PF is not built on truth. Uh, ZANU-PF uh, only goes there uh, uh, for the purposes of benefiting economically by displacing the people, by not protecting workers because workers are being donated to uh, the opposition in Zimbabwe. As the Zimbabwe Communist Party are saying, if we are to build socialism in Zimbabwe, it must be built under our own conditions, not under the Chinese conditions in Zimbabwe, because conditions are different. And a part of building the, uh, socialism in Zimbabwe, it means that we must raise the class consciousness of the workers and uh, the peasants because at the end, uh, it is the workers that uh, drive production. Therefore, it is key as the party that we raise these issues with the Communist Party of China so that action is taken. Right. And as we draw to a close, what's your view on the U.S. Africa summit that is upcoming. Well, 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 well uh, uh, the United States <coughs> thinks that, as you raised earlier on, that uh, China is taking over in Africa, is pushing it out. It is also trying to cement its, its relationship uh, with uh, Africa. Uh, uh, of course, it is not based on honesty and the truth. It is based on also plundering the resources. 
uh, of Africa, we saw <coughs> what is happening. Uh, we are seeing what is happening in the Democratic Republic of Congo. In fact, the sanctions that you are talking of, about have their roots in the Democratic Republic of Congo because the United States, under the leadership of former President Bill Clinton, used Rwanda and uh, Uganda as proxies to attack the Democratic Republic of Congo because the United States and reference wanted to exploit the minerals in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And the Mugabe uh, in 1998 then sent the, the army to defend uh, Kabila Senior, the late Kabila Senior. And that's where you have your roots uh, of the sanctions. So the issue of human rights and so on is just to, to camouflage everybody. But the roots are in the exploitation of resources in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, this relationship, uh, which they are now trying to rebuild uh, through this summit, is specifically meant to that. It's not only the United States. We have Japan, Africa Summit, Russia, Africa Summit, EU, Africa Summit, Britain, Africa Summit. We must build our own economy. Yes, we cannot build it in isolation. We need to work or trade with others. We need to do business with others. But we must protect our own economic interests as Africans.